Another application that uses these exponents and logarithms is when you're heating something or cooling it down. Under those circumstances, what it ends up being is that the greater the difference in temperature between the object and the surroundings, the faster the temperature changes. And working with that, you come up with something like this. Now, fair warning, this is slightly different from the formula they give in the book. But I think that our, my way of doing it here is actually a little bit easier to understand than theirs. The hardest thing to figure out is the fact that we've got four different T's in this formula. So capital T is the temperature after some time has passed. T sub A is what we call the ambient temperature. It's the temperature of the surroundings. So if you're putting something in an oven, it's the oven temperature. If you're putting something in a refrigerator, it's the refrigerator temperature. If you've got something in a room, it's the temperature of the air in the room. T sub zero is the original temperature of the object. And again, if you're looking at the book in, in their formula, they're calling T zero something else. So be careful with that. And T is time. So let's say we find a dead body. It's found at 8.53 a.m. and it's in an office building that's kept at a steady 70 degrees Fahrenheit all day. At the time it's found, they measure the body temperature and find that it's 74 degrees Fahrenheit. And under those conditions, it's known that a body cools to 80 degrees Fahrenheit in about two hours. And we want to estimate the time of death here. Well, just like the other problems we've done, we first of all have to figure out what is this k value in our formula. That k is a constant, which we need to use. We need to figure it out using known information. So what do we know? Well, we know the body cools to 80 degrees Fahrenheit in two hours. So I know the temperature T is 80 after some time. I know my time is 80. My ambient temperature is the 70. What's the starting temperature? Well, typically this would be given to you in a problem, but hopefully you know that a human body temperature is right around 98 Fahrenheit. It's a little higher. We'll just call it 98 to make the numbers work out a little bit easy. So 80 is equal to the ambient temperature of 70 plus the starting temperature of 98 minus the ambient temperature of 70 e to the k times two hours. So simplifying this thing a little bit, let's subtract 70 from both sides. So 10 is equal to 28 e to the k times 2. Divide by 28. Hopefully you see that now I would take the ln and then we divide by 2. And I actually forgot to figure this thing out beforehand, so give me a second to plug it into a calculator. Comes out to be a negative 0 0.5148. Okay, so far so good. So now that I've got that K, now how do I figure out the time of death? Well, same formula I'm using.
Now, when it was discovered, the temperature of the body was 74. So I'll put in that for my T. The ambient temperature was 70. The original temperature of the body was 98 minus the 70. E. And just like before, even though we know what K is, I'm not going to plug that thing in because it's just so annoying to write that thing out. I'll plug it in at the very end. Subtracting, so I get 4 is equal to 28 e to the kt. Divide by 28, 4 28ths. I may as well simplify that down to 1 7th. Take the ln of both sides. ln cancels out the e. And so my t is equal to the ln of 1 7th divided by my k value of negative 0 0.5148097. And that comes out to be about 3.78 hours. Okay, but if we actually go back to the original problem, it says estimate the time of death. Now, honestly, I'd probably never expect you to do this, but to actually answer the question, we should actually go back and figure out what is the time of death. And so the first thing is, is that 0.78 hours, we should change that to a number of minutes. In fact, it's really rare for someone to say 3.78 hours. It's typically three hours. And then to figure out the number of minutes, I take 0.78 times there's 60 minutes in an hour. comes out to be about 47 minutes. So, that body's been dead for 3 hours and 47 minutes. And it started, we, we measured the time, at 8.53. Or 3 hours and 47 minutes before that. So, that would be about 5.06 a.m. is the time of death. Now, a couple of things about this problem, just so you don't think that you're amazing forensic scientist just from this one example here. Once again, they're never going to know to the nearest minute. You may see that on some crime dramas, they're lying. It's much more broad for this. They typically will often even say like a range of two hours where the time would die. They might say something like between 4 and 6 a.m. or something like this. The other thing is, while the forensic principles they use to estimate the time of death are based on this, they actually don't do this kind of thing. They actually typically use tables based on temperatures and things like that, rather than actually working out the math each time. I also should just mention the numbers in this are completely fabricated. I have no idea how fast bodies cool down. Not something in my personal experience.